Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. Uh, my name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me on this update video. Typically I release update videos every two weeks or so, at least that has been the recent schedule, um, but I've missed a week uh, because of busyness. I'm doing some um, citizenship stuff, so apologies to everybody who has been waiting on uh, the video from last week. Uh, but hopefully this will make up for it. So uh, we wrapped up the PDF work and we've been basically waiting for um, the build results to come in. So this is Windows uh, testing, Mac OS build infrastructure, uh, figuring out what versions of Mac OS we're going to be able to support. Um, but before we get into the actual messy details and talk about bugs, I wanna give a big shout out and a big thank you to everybody that sponsors my work. Um, in case you're new here, Basically, uh, my work is paid for by you. Um, you guys want to see Inkscape improve and you want to be able to have some say into how it improves and what bugs are get the priorities, right? So the way this works is you join my LibrePay, you join my Patreon, etc., etc., And through paying me for my time, I get to ignore private contracts, I get to ignore big business, and I get to focus on the things that are important to regular users. So a big thing thank you must go out every single one of these videos to all of the people that continue to pay for my time uh, because really is you guys who are helping me do this work for you okay so with that out of the way most of my time for the past couple of weeks has actually been taken up with bug fixing um, I was contracted by the Inkscape project to do the BAP the bug accelerator pro program again for 1.4 uh, I get to fix bugs for 1.4.1 as well as 1.4.2, which is great. And we've managed to fix a bunch of bugs. Um, this round, we've hired myself, Tav, and KRLR17, who is doing the bug administration role. Uh, so far, everything is going well. This is the first time we've done the administration role. So uh, we're seeing how this jives between two developers and one administrator. Um, hopefully this can be a model going forwards because I think that administration support is really critical for being able to make sure that we're fixing the right bugs uh, for the release. We are on the cusp of releasing 1.4.1. We fixed a whole bunch of problems. So first of all, there was a splash screen that was added for slow startup times, basically. So as soon as possible, Inktip will try and display something to the screen as a splash screen. This was a contribution from last November, but it was causing major issues, uh, crashes on Mac OS and uh, serious issues with signaling and some other issues with GTK. So I had to refactor it. I had to refactor it for 1.4.1 and also for master, two completely different bits of work. And uh, that has been merged, which is great. That should fix all of those major blocking issues. They were blocking 1.4.1 from being released. Um, also, there was a bug with internationalization of ICC pro profile names. They would crash Inkscape. That has been fixed. There was a, dra a drag and drop bug where you could only drag and drop one time in the uh, layers dialog, depending upon your operating system. Sometimes it was Wayland, sometimes it was Plasma. Oop, no go. I need my notes. Um, protect the so when you were editing grids sometimes it would get into an infinite loop where it would keep on editing and then updating the box and editing and updating the box and Inkscape would then freeze that has been fixed uh, layer editing issues um, when adding things that those have been fixed uh, malfunctioning preferences in the spray can basically there's a whole bunch of preferences in the spray can that were basically disabled because of some work that had been done and it hadn't been adequately tested. So those all should be fixed. Uh, there was a href fi uh, crash in the XML dialog. That has been fixed. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff that has been fixed by Tav. Um, I've been doing um, his merge reviews. A couple of fixes by KROLOS17 even. He's been doing a really good job. Um, so that's the back stuff. Um, improvements and fixes on non bap stuff is um, rotations. So uh, if you use the keyboard shortcut to do a rotation, um, it was wandering over the canvas uh, when you selected a non-top left anchor point. Um, most people probably don't know this, but you can actually click on one of the um, rotation handles and then use a keyboard shortcut to rotate 
uh, it a certain number of degrees, right? So you can just click on it and then click, 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 click. Uh, but unfortunately, because the, the center of the bounding box would shift with a rotation, the uh, rotation center would, sh would also shift. Um, that's been fixed by basically making it so that the uh, when you do multiple rotations without doing anything else, uh, it saves the center point until next time. Um, there was, uh, I've added a feature to the undo stacking, which is a timeout. It basically means that if you are doing something which you would usually stack, so for instance, if you nudge an item, uh, you don't want a million undos, so you just get one. And then when you do, uh, when you use the undo system, it just goes back to like the original one. But what I've done is I've done a timeout. So if you do nothing for 10 seconds and then come back and then start nudging again, that will produce one more um, undo stack item, right? Because it clears the key. Uh, this should be something that we can take advantage of in the future to improve the user experience with undo. Mostly it's because we don't want undo stacking to be like forever because it creates some weird user experience issues where users don't understand what's happening. Um, I added the pre-processing um, actions to extensions that are effect extensions instead of just uh, output and input extensions. So that should help with um, extension authors who were excited to use the pre-processing instructions, but uh, they never worked. So apologies for telling people that there was a feature that wasn't quite ready yet. That has been fixed. Um, we've been navigating the issues with the PDF export, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Most of it has been due to the way in which the uh, CAPI PDF li library is very, very new and requires very, very new computers to run it, um, versions of operating systems. The main restriction seems to be Mac OS. We're going to have to raise the minimum uh, Mac OS version to, I think Rene said something like 2017. So if you have a piece of hardware, Mac OS hardware, that is older than 2017, then you won't be able to use the PDF export. And that breaks my heart a little bit because you know, we want Inkscape to be accessible, and part of that accessibility is being able to enable older hardware to be able to do things uh, for longer and without having to create so much e-waste. Um, so, you know, we have to balance the fact that, like, this code cannot really be translated into something that can be compiled for older Mac OS versions, and mostly this is to do with the way Apple operates its Xcode library system, so we don't really have any control over that but we're gonna try as hard as we can to release a version of Inkscape without the new PDF stuff. You'll just have the old Cairo exporter and then a newer version uh, for newer Mac OS versions for which will have the CMYK PDF export. So uh, apologies in advance for everybody who finds this video wondering like why their older version of Mac OS doesn't have this new functionality. Um, is that everything? Yeah, there's been a bunch of administration stuff uh, inside the project. So, as you know, there are a bunch of volunteers and other people that are involved in Inkscape. Um, there's some talks. We had some talks with Blender and Ton, uh, which were very fruitful. Um, they're organizing a hack fest in uh, Nuremberg, which will be excellent. It'll be after the Libre Graphics com Conference. So that's where a bunch of programmers will get together. So that looks exciting. And um, yeah, I think that's probably about it for this week. Let me know in the comments what you want to hear about, uh, because there's always a bunch of things that I keep forgetting to mention. Um, and I guess I will see you in two weeks time. Fingers crossed. Okay, bye bye.